Just say, uh, oh, come, oh, come, let us adore. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. One more time, let's all oh, come, let us.
Crystal, yeah, you can go ahead and put up uh, at Calvary. to a mini choir today.
I didn't think you was going to hold that note that long. Look at you. <laughs> I was going to give y'all a break. Good luck. <laughs> It's a new day. I'm free. There's no more change. Washed in the blood. I'm clean. Thank the Lord. Washed in the blood. Washed in the blood. I'm clean. I'm clean. I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord for setting me free. It's a new day. A new day. I'm free. I'm free. There's no more change. There's no more change. That's all in me. Then I'm washed in the blood. Washed in the blood. one time. We got it. 
got it. Let the 
praises of our King, rise the morning, let it rise. Oh, 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 the morning, let it rise. Oh, 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 the morning, let it Sunday in uh, the first Sunday in 2020 in, de in December. Praise God. Our theme for December is "Come All Ye Faithful," and uh, during these next few uh, weeks, uh, the last uh, weeks in, in this month, we pray God that you understand what we're talking about. Oh, come all ye faithful. In that song, one of the lines is "Come and behold Him." Behold Him. It's all about Him. He's the reason for the season. Now, in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, uh, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now, those two things that are said about the church by the apostle Paul are related to one group of people. They are the saints and they're also the faithful. It's, this is not two people, two sets of people, the faithful and also those who are saints. But if we're saints, we're also called to be faithful in Christ Jesus. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints. We're set apart. So as saints, we're set apart for God's glory and God's use. And also, we're to be faithful to our calling as saints. Hence the theme will come, are you faithful? Now, in order to be faithful, you know, one of the things that people talk about a lot the last couple of years is uh, what's called a world view. You know, and uh, so people say, well, and one thing is true that we do have, everybody, all of us has a world view. A world view is simply how we view the world. <laughs> so everybody got one. It's how we view the world. And since we are saints and called to be faithful, what we want to do is to have our view, how we view things in line with the Word of God. So when we look at this, uh, when I talk about a worldview, I, I, I hardly use that because it can be confusing. Uh, we want to know biblical terms. And so in other words, we want to we get our understanding from the Bible. And that's all what we're trying to say. So in other words... Uh, on all kinds of things. It's what is our perspective? How do we see things? For instance, how do we see life? How do we see death? And because I have a biblical understanding, when I, I see death, uh, I think absent from the body, present with the Lord. I, I think that um, I'm going to heaven. I think the rapture. Uh, and I think um, then the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So when I see death, then I, see, uh, I don't see death as the end. I see death as a brand new beginning of uh, what God is going to be doing for us. And that's, that's because it comes from the Bible. 
So when a, a worldview is simply how you view the things in the world or about the world. All of us have that. So when it comes to life, you know, again, life to me is, Paul says what? For me to live is Christ. So you think about life, you think about death, you think about marriage. So my viewpoint on, on marriage is one man, one woman forever. Where you get that from? The Bible. And so a worldview is simply how we view the things, the topics that everybody you know, are talking about. Even right and wrong or work, creation, God, evolution, science. In other words, see, my, my worldview, we talk about science. Well, then, since God created the heavens and the, and the earth, since God is all wise and all powerful, everything God does is genuinely true. And science must agree with God. It's not that Christianity must agree with science. That's my view. And so when I hear stuff, I was watching something the other day, and I love to watch these various uh, adventures. They're talking about animals in certain parts of the world and all this. Uh, I love those things. And they said, and these islands date back uh, 240 million years. And I'm going, no, they don't. So I'm looking at the flood. This is the evidence of the flood. Because, and so that's my worldview, you see. And so when it comes to climate change, I got a worldview. Uh, and so that's the idea. All the things that we're talking about, my view comes from thus saith the Lord. Because if God cannot lie and God knows everything, then everything he tells us must be true. And if I'm following what he says, then I have to be true along with him. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So when I follow him, he says, you're not going to walk in the darkness. You have the light of life, and you are one of those who are about the truth. And so, oh, come all ye faithful. And my message today is, and I've been listening to, um, uh, it just reminded me, you know I love these old 60s songs. Y'all don't know this girl. Her name is Leslie Gore. <laughs> Yeah, I know you know her. <laughs> she sang a song in 62, You Don't Own Me. <laughs> and so I played it two or three times uh, as I was uh, meditating on, on the message. And this is what I'm saying. Stop letting the world own you. Amen. Tell the world, you don't own me. Tell me who I can go out with, where I can go, who I can talk with. You don't own me. <laughs> And so, look at Galatians chapter 4, verse 17. This is going to make sense to you. Galatians 4, 17. The apostle Paul is in Galatia. He preaching, he's preaching the word of God. People are being set free. And so, the legalizers and the Judaizers come along. And here's what Paul says. He says, they make, and this is the, this is the ESV, English Standard Version. They make much of you, but for no good. See, that's number one. They make much of you, but it's, it's for no good. And uh, it's, it's uh, for no good purpose. And then it says, they want to shut you out, number two. And number three, that you may make much of them. You see that? See, in this world in which we are living, there are forces headed by Satan that this is what they want to do with us. And I tell them, you don't own me. You, don't, you, you, you can't cause me to, to, stop, to, to think this way and stop thinking this way. You don't own me. And so ESV, it says, they make much of you, but for no good purpose, they want to shut you out that you may make much of them. Amen. And uh, so there's another version called the, the Message. Galatians 4, 17. Now, you may not have this, but in the message, let me read this to you. I love this version, and it says this. Uh, many of you know about the message. It's kind of a paraphrase. Eugene Peterson. He says, those heretical teachers, this is what Paul's saying about the legalizers, those heretical teachers go to great lengths to flatter you, but their motives are rotten. They want to shut you out of the free world of God's grace. The world of God's grace. They want to shut you out of God's grace. See, they were preaching legalism. 
Jesus wasn't enough. You had to add the law of Moses and be circumcised. Amen. They want to shut you out of the free world of God's grace so that you will always depend on them for approval and direction and you make them feel important. That's a great, uh, great uh, paraphrase. Great paraphrase. Amen. Another one says they are enthusiastic about you, but it's not for any good. They want to isolate you so that you will be enthusiastic about them. See, what's going on, and this, this goes on in education, in, in politics, it goes on what people want, and we've seen it this year through the COVID-19 and all the other things, there's truth and there are lies, and, I'm, and I know to be very, very careful, but I also know people want to control us. It's kind of like a dry run. We, if we can control you now, then we're going to control you later on to a, to a bigger degree. And so you got people in certain offices who, are, who love this practice of saying safety is more important than anything else. And so I decide, because of my political office, whether you can go to church or not. Because you see what, what's going on? Anytime somebody tells me I can't worship, I know, the, I know where that comes from. Get thee behind me, Satan. And so notice what happens. It says they court you. They make much of you. But it's not for good. They want to exclude or isolate you so that you will only depend upon them and all your uh, enthusiasm, all your zeal, all your love will go toward them. Be wary of anybody who's, who tries to own you. So the message today, come all you faithful, I'm coming to behold Jesus. And anything that's going to distract me from beholding Jesus, I'm saying, get thee behind me, Satan. Amen. Like I say, it happens all over the place. Because what happens is, you know, people will say, uh, you can't be a good member of your, of your society, of your culture, unless you act the way I think you ought to act. Get out of my face. You, you don't make that call. Jesus makes that call. See, 1 Peter 2.9 says, I belong to him. We're a chosen generation. The word peculiar people, the idea of 1 Peter 9, 2, 9, listen, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. That means I belong to him. You can't tell me how to act. I don't belong to you. You don't own me. The one who owns me is the one who died for me, buried and was rose again. And in him I live and move and have my being. You don't own me. You don't own me. You, my, my culture, you don't own me. People think they can intimidate me. Well, in order to be this kind of person, then you got to think this way. Look, you got an IQ of, of 26. If your IQ is 26, not 126, just 26, I'm not following you. We're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. See, this is what Paul says. He says to the Galatians, they got saved, they got set free. That's why Galatians 5.1, Paul says, stand fast in the liberty with Christ made you free. Don't ever give up your thinking. Don't leave your, uh, your brain in your car and allow people to dictate to you what you must do. They, they court you, but it's not for any good. And see, what was happening in Paul's time, they tried to eliminate the relationship Paul had with the Galatians. They wanted to move Paul out. Why? So they could move in. <laughs> and when they moved in, then they were going to teach them. Jesus said this way. He said in Matthew 23, 15, he says, you know what? Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. You travel land and sea to win one proselyte. <laughs> and when he is one, you make him twice as much the son of heck <laughs> as yourselves. Amen. That's what happens. That's what, and so 
contrary wise, when you're in a, in a situation with a church, you got leadership, you got the Bible, you got the Holy Spirit, and you're allowed to be free to search the scriptures, you become a great Christian. And so what happens is the people who come along after you, they may be better Christians than you are. Amen. And so folks want to contain us. So uh, they zealously court us, but for no good reason. They want to isolate us only for them. Okay. And uh, one of the things that we as a people, uh, I w want you to understand, people may be zealous for us or emotional about their agenda, but what they want us to do is fall in line. I heard something uh, this morning as, as I uh, was uh, getting ready to come. And uh, so this one lady, she's elected. And, and so she was talking about the fact that COVID impacts certain people more than other people. Okay? And then she made it a racial issue. Oh, yeah, okay. I said, and I, I'm listening to her. Okay, so what you going to do? Well, we're going to get some legislation. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Why don't you tell us who's impacted more? We need to eat right. If I got high, high blood pressure, diabetes, fungus among us, <laughs> tell me to get rid of that stuff. I got an immune system that can't fight off anything. You see what I'm saying? And then when it impacts me, you say, oh, see, that's what's wrong in America. Race, race, race. Look at this. It's impacting me. Yeah, you 75 pounds overweight. You ain't never had a vegetable. You ain't, you ain't run a lap. Yeah, it's going to impact you. So you ain't going to tell us that. You ain't going to tell us that. But you're going to tell us it's somebody else's fault. You think, and, and, and you think, wait a minute, let me think for myself. How does a virus that impacts the whole world, <laughs> there you go, my sister, impact, they dying all over the world. But it's only picking on me. <laughs> See, you got, I'm going, wait a minute, that, how, should, how, could, how would I swallow that foolishness? And it, it, a lot of things happen because of the way that we conduct ourselves. See, I love the fact that we are emotional and that, uh, uh, you know, we can take it to the max. Yeah, we can take it to the max. Ain't nobody can take it like us. But you can't let emotions dictate to us. Somebody get us all hyped up and all this kind of stuff and play the right kind of things and hit the high note, ah, you know, then all of a sudden, woo, you know, and we leave there saying, I don't know what was said, but woo, it was, it was good, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Emotions can't dictate to us. Praise the Lord, I'm so glad Jesus, his Jesus' emotions said, don't go to the cross. He said, if it's possible, yeah, if Jesus was living by his emotions, I'm, a, I'm dead, I'm lost. I got no savior. He said, my soul is troubled. Nevertheless, I come for this hour. Therefore, I'm going to Calvary. That's determination. That's an act of the will. That's not emotion. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We determine to act in a certain way. And again, and that's why when we look, when we marry people, we say, look, it's an act of the will. And we get a ring and we say, with this ring, I thee wed. We make a vow saying, it don't, it don't, regardless of how I feel the next day. Amen. Amen. I mean, I feel like I should be married to you now, but I made a vow. Y'all, y'all, if you, if you, anybody been married, that's why we sing the song 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. If you've been married that long, you know you want to get out. <laughs> you want to get out sometime or another. Sometime it's the first year. What did I get into? <laughs> 
And that's what, what, what the Bible teaches is that with Christ, we got to make up our mind. See, it's not only do we die every day, but we have to reckon that we're already dead. See, we get to die every day, so I get up this, I got to die to, I got to, die to self today. Oh, what if I, what if I don't want to die to self today? <laughs> but see, you get up also, you got to understand, look, I died 46 years ago. I died to self. I made a vow. I'm going through with the Lord's despised few. My mind hasn't been changed. I've been too far to turn around. I ain't turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. And I'm going to keep on keeping on. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I ain't going nowhere. They zealously court us uh, because uh, they want to make us be dependent upon them. That's when you know you're in a cult. That's when you know your fraternity and your sorority has taken you too far. That's when you know education is wrong because what happens when emotions uh, become, our, they dominate us, emotions become destructive. They become destructive. This happens everywhere again. See, uh, I, I'm a Christian above being a union worker. I'm, I was a UAW worker, brother. I'm a Christian first. And so my union doesn't determine how I should act. It, it's, my, it's my Christ. Amen. You know, different associations, politics, religion. I've been told, you know, I'd be a, a much better cultural guy if I was more into, into politics and this and that. Well, I'm not interested in, the, in politics. For me to live is Christ. Amen. To die is gain. Amen. Amen. At the end of the day, you, listen, uh, you get no reward for being culturally sensitive. <laughs> I don't care whether you're white, black, Native American, Hisp Hispanic, Latino, whatever you might be. You're not going to stand before Jesus and say, oh, <laughs> look at you. You were, so you were so culturally significant. Let me give you a reward. <laughs> so there ain't, no, there ain't no reward for me being black. But there is a reward for me following Christ. He says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And even now, so now we deal with, uh, with sexual orientation and all these kind of things. And uh, my, my granddaughter, she's looking, you know, Lindsay, she's always finding stuff. She sent me this, and I have it on my phone. And uh, it's a series of, of texts, and it says, one, one lady says, uh, this, this beautiful young baby was born, and uh, so the baby starts out. I'm about to, I probably told you that they, they, they put all kind of clothes and dresses and different things on her, and, and uh, so it was a baby. That's all they said, it's a baby. And then after a while, uh, the baby decides that he wants to be a boy. So they changed everything, and his mother says, we didn't know what you were when you were born. But you helped us to figure it out that you are a boy. And, my, and Lindsay said, and that's in the library, in the children's section. Isn't that something? Amen. It's, 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 it's wicked. It's evil. It's evil. It's evil. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites. <laughs> Say so you, you look for a proselyte, and when you find one, you make him twice the child of the devil than you are. Praise the Lord. And so my, my point to us is don't let anybody own you. Amen. Don't let anybody, because there are three things there. Number one, they're going to court you. Yeah. Number two, they want to exclude you or isolate you. And number three, they want you to depend upon them. To depend upon them. I'm weary of anybody who tells me I can't make it Amen. in America. You know why I'm weary? Because Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? And his righteousness. And what we need, he says, your heavenly father knows what we have need of. And that's going to be added. So it doesn't matter whether I'm in America or wherever I, I might be. Then the Bible is telling me, and my worldview, my perspective is, my heavenly father says, if you seek me first, I know how to take care of you. 
So it doesn't matter where I am. Amen. 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 But when people tell people who are making it, it's, it's amazing. Folks who, folks who are making money telling you you can't make no money. Well, you made it. <laughs> you made it. So the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.19, Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. The solid foundation of God stands. And here's the seal. The seal is this. The Lord knows those who are his. <laughs> you got that? See, Jesus said it this way. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. My Father who gave them me is greater than all. So that's the idea. The foundation of God stands seal. Uh, uh, the foundation of God stands. Here's the seal. The seal is not first and foremost that I'm going to hold out. The seal is God. Jesus knows me. <laughs> he knows me. He knows me. The Lord knows uh, who are his. And then, and because of that, the, here is the exhortation. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen. Amen. If you say you saved and you're pursuing lawlessness, immorality, iniquity, then listen, that profession won't save you. If it's the real deal, you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. So Paul goes on to say in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2, he says, but in every house, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Amen? Amen. Amen. Some for honor, some for dishonor. Wait a minute, but don't, don't go too far. Some for honor, some for dishonor. Well, does that mean that I'm going to be a dishonorable person and, I have nothing to, and there's nothing I can do about it? Well, look at 2 Timothy 2.21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter. See, when you make up your mind to follow Jesus Christ, God is there to help you. His foundation stands sure. And so people say, if you take one step, God will take two. I say this, if you take one step, God will take all the rest. You take the step to have Jesus come into your life, and then you're going to find out that now he, he's in control now. He got it. He got it. You know what, uh, uh, listening to, to understanding what God did on, uh, on Calvary, you got to go back to Abraham, and we're children of Abraham. God makes a covenant with Abraham. He makes an agreement. He says, Ab said Abraham, you are righteous. You believe me, and I'm going to count it to you for righteousness. So then what he does, God has uh, Abraham set up this, this, this sacrificial system, and animals are slayed. And they're put on one side, just like down the aisle, one side and another. And, the, and from that understanding, see, one person or two people, normally two people walk through it, which means they are committed. And all Abraham did to show he was with, this, with the system was uh, God, put the, God caused these animals to be set apart and he killed them. But he didn't kill the birds, the vultures. So the vultures swooped down, Abraham fought them off. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that's, isn't that another picture? When I, when I was coming to Jesus, I had to fight off the vultures. Because yeah. the, the vultures were saying, don't enter into this agreement. Don't enter into this agreement. You, you don't want to go through. No, you don't want to do that. You see, I'm fighting off the vultures. So what did God do? He put Abraham in a deep sleep. <laughs> He laid Abraham out, and Abraham was snoring. <laughs> and God walked through himself. And then he walked back through. You know what that signifies? God says, I'm declaring you righteous. And I'm declaring you righteous, and it's on me. And, I, and I'm going to fulfill the conditions of this covenant. Don't worry about it. I'm going to fulfill it. And then when he walks through again, you back and forth as he walks through. See, what he's saying is that these animals are slain. It's a blood covenant. Yeah. So God says, I'm going to fulfill this covenant with you, Abraham. And you and Abraham sleep. 
And God walks through and says, so if you, uh, so I'm going to do right. I promise you, I'm going to do right. And then he says, but Abraham, if you don't do right, I'm still going to do it. So you see, somebody has to die in that covenant. Am I making sense to you? Abraham is asleep. God walks through and says, I'm going to do right. He walks through again. He says, and if you don't do right, I'll die for you. Woo! Hallelujah. If you don't do right, I'll die. Jesus went to Calvary for you and me. He died because we didn't do right. We didn't do right. But he died for us. He was buried, rose again the third day. Oh, praise his holy name. And so I say, you don't own me. <laughs> you don't own me. You don't tell me what to think. You don't tell me what to do. You don't tell me where to go. You don't formulate my ideas. You don't own me. The one who owns me is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, today, if anyone cleanses himself from being of honor, a vessel of dishonor, you can be made a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Amen. Satan wants to sift us like wheat in killing our effectiveness by causing us to act like mere human beings when we are the saints of God. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful, joyful and triumphant. Come ye, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him. So during this COVID, I've had opportunity to behold Jesus day in and day out for months, for months for months and it's caused me to even grow more than what I was growing because I'm going to spend time with Jesus Christ. Oh come all ye faithful joyful and triumphant. Behold him and watch how God changes your, your life. See Satan does not want us to have a biblical world view but the more you behold Jesus and you stay in the word of God then you begin to see things from God's perspective. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful, and triumphant. Pray with me. Father, thank you. Thank you as we, we open up this series, uh, Oh, Come, All Ye Faithful. Number one we looked at today is you don't own me. You don't own me. And although the world, the flesh, and the devil wants to own us, wants to cause us, uh, they want to court us, and then they want to isolate us. Get that? They want to isolate us. And then, Father, they want us to depend upon them. Lord, but we've been set free for freedom's sake in Jesus Christ. And this, uh, this season, this Christmas season, may we behold our King our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We come to adore your son, your darling son, and we come in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, does uh, everyone who wants to participate have the elements? Okay. Uh, do we need to uh, we need to pass out to any based upon on the message and we want to come all ye faithful and we want to be the saints of God our Lord Jesus Christ told us that in the taking of the Lord's Supper this was uh, one way to remember him as often as we do this we remember the covenant that our Lord Jesus Christ uh, has given to us uh, in free pardon of sins Praise God. Praise God. And so as we do this, this is what I, I, I focus on Calvary. It's not about the wafer uh, or, the, or what it tastes like or the juice. It's about Jesus who went to Calvary for me when I did not know him. And then Jesus, through his Holy Spirit, 
brought me from death into life and drew me to a personal relationship. So in light of that, and in light of we're, uh, that we're not going to let anybody else own us, then are we prepared to take, the, the, first of all, the wafer? Amen? Let's take the wafer. Amen. And now the juice. Amen. Praise the Lord. As often as we do this, Heavenly Father, we do this in remembrance of you. So I tell the world, the flesh and the devil, you don't own me. <laughs> you don't own me. Yeah, tell me where I can go and what I can't do. No, I'm owned by my Lord and Savior. Father, once again, thank you for the message. Thank you, Lord, for, for your supper. May we be reminded that we belong to you. The foundation of the Lord stands, and it stands, and the seal is you know us. You know us who belong to you, and then we need to depart from iniquity. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, as we look at our blessed birthdays, December the 8th, the 10th, the 10th, and the 11th, we have Jermaine Cornelius Sr., we have uh, uh, Aaliyah, Aaliyah Jackson, praise God, Joyce Bryant, and Laurie Richardson. So, we're going to sing Blessed Birthday to, we, we have Jermaine, Aaliyah, we go to our sisters and our brother. Sing Blessed Birthday. We ready? Blessed birthday to you. Blessed birthday to you. Blessed birthday, sisters and brothers. Blessed birthday to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Any, any anniversaries or any other birthdays we missed? All right, if not, praise the Lord. Uh, any other announcements we need to make? No other announcements? They're all taken care of? All hearts and minds are clear? All right, then we're, we're, uh, we're ready to go. Praise the Lord. So we need a song to sing as we go out. Anybody want to give, give us a song? Anybody got a song in their heart? All right, okay. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Think about his love. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace. That's brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure. Oh, great is the measure of our Father's love. One last time. Great is the measure. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Yes. Yes. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us till we meet again together as we conclude. Let us sing amen. Ready? Amen. Oh. Have a good day. Be careful. Be safe. Keep, 
keep on praying and we'll keep trusting.